prior to the current era of biologic therapy, many of the treatments that we used for psoriasis were uh, uh, not ideal for women of childbearing potential. Uh, methotrexate was used to induce abortions uh, and certainly is associated with birth defects. Uh, acetretin is associated with awful birth defects. Uh, and the third oral medication we used to have, cyclosporin, um, it was pregnancy category C back in the day when the FDA had pregnancy categories, but mostly because it was used in uh, sick transplant patients. Uh, when it was used for psoriasis, it was actually um, uh, probably safer than in the other populations. But the bottom line is that um, that drug used to be the one we went to for patients with severe psoriasis flares during pregnancy because it had a track record in transplant patients. And the main side effect was actually, if I remember correctly, a reduction in birth weight um, on average. Uh, and it was a small reduction. So it was a fairly safe drug to use. Uh, along come the biologics, and these now, by and large, are pregnancy category B uh, uh, when we had pregnancy categories. Uh, and so they were safer to use, uh, according to the FDA package insert. Um, but also, they were safe to use. Um, uh, because the frequency of birth defects uh, and miscarriages is so high, uh, roughly one out of six pregnancies in the U.S. ends in a miscarriage, uh, and approximately one to two percent of pregnancies ends up with a major birth defect, even in untreated patients. Um, many pregnant women don't want to take a chance and stop all therapies prior to pregnancy. Um, and certainly we know that antibodies cross the placenta. So all of the medications that we had prior to sertilizumab did actually get to the fetus. They crossed the placenta uh, and had an impact on the developing fetus. Um, uh, none of them are associated with specific birth defects. So, um, so even though they cross the placenta, we're not aware of a, a birth defect that they cause. Sertilizumab was the first one, and it's a pegylated TNF blocker, so it doesn't cross the placenta, uh, and therefore presumably might be safer during pregnancy. Uh, and I will say that I do prescribe sertilizumab uh, in women of childbearing potential for that reason. Um, uh, the um, newer biologics we have a lot less data on, uh, but it appears that um, they are antibodies, so certainly some of them may cross the placenta. Some of them appear not to for reasons that are unclear, but some of them may cross the placenta. Uh, and you would, affect that, you would expect that they might have an impact on the fetus. But again, none have been associated with a specific birth defect. Um, I suspect that if the FDA were still using pregnancy categories, all of the new antibodies would be listed as pregnancy category B, uh, although in um, uh, uh, a monkey model uh, that is often used as for testing in, in uh, pregnancy um, with some of the drugs as they give, for example, 20 times the maximum um, dose that we would give to humans, you see some fetal death. Um, so they don't have a, a, we don't have enough information to say that they are safe. Uh, one of the advantages of some of the newer drugs is that they can be stopped prior to a pregnancy, and it takes a while for psoriasis to reoccur. So because it takes a while for psoriasis to reoccur, you can actually plan a pregnancy and plan to administer the drug prior to conception, uh, and then have the um, patient you know, hold off on retreatment until after the pregnancy. And some of my patients have chosen to do that. Uh, in pediatric, patients with psoriasis, uh, we have a little bit more of a challenge because many of the drugs that we use are not approved for pediatrics. Um, and actually, some of the older drugs are not specifically approved for pediatrics, but because they're cheap, insurers allow us to use drugs like methotrexate and cyclosporin. Um, the drugs that are approved are etanercept is approved even in children, and that is easier to get for that reason. Uh, in some parts of the world, adalimumab is approved in children, and eustachinumab is approved in, uh, in um, teenagers uh, and hopefully will be approved in pediatrics as well. Um, uh, if I had the opportunity 
to pick the drug I'd like to use, I would use one of the drugs that's given infrequently, like ustekinumab, which can, can be given as infrequently as every three months. And some of the IL-23 blockers are ideal in that setting. Um, but children, more than adults, especially um, teenagers, and even children younger than teenagers, are bullied and picked on because of their psoriasis. And other kids often think that their psoriasis is contagious. They don't have uh, um, the kind of uh, knowledge base about psoriasis uh, that makes them sympathetic to children who have psoriasis. So I think it's even more important to treat psoriasis in children than in others. Um, uh, so I think children will uh, readily put up with any treatment that clears them. And that includes etanercept, which is given you know, weekly. Um, so even frequent uh, treatments are acceptable to kids. Uh, and you know, remember that children with diabetes take insulin, and they don't have a choice. They have to take insulin injections. So we can train our patients to get injected. Um, but again, if I had my choice, I'd give one of the less frequently injected drugs.